Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. I got a 3D printer. After many months and nearly pulling the trigger at least twice, I asked GearBest, I just decided to ask GearBest, and they said, oh sure, we'll send you a printer. And uh, they sent me the CR10, which is the one I asked for. I had been looking at the, uh, the name was the A8Net or A-Net 8, uh, which is a very popular printer because it comes in around 100, 150 bucks. Um, I asked for this one because this one I had read uh, comes primarily assembled and assembled the A8 was something that I really worried about because I saw many videos where people talked about how they had a friend who had one come over and help them put it together and it took like an hour and I thought well if they got help putting it together and it was an hour I, I don't have that much time to invest and that's something about 3D printing that I'm hoping to convey from this video is it's d depending upon the printer that you go for it's not as a daunting task as at least I thought it would be I thought I would be spending months before I actually had one decent print and my very first night I had one good solid print right here it came on the USB card that you get with it it's the called the uh, the I think they call it the decapitat or something like that because a lot of times this code on the USB was corrupted so you'd end up with a cat that would uh, have a head that was all messed up, but mine came out perfect. Um, I have this green on the bottom. That was the initial Color I think that was already in the nozzle, so that's a little bit weird But uh, I haven't had that since obviously because I've been running the stock filament through there um, But that print looks pretty good. I Don't think the camera will focus. Let me see if I can get both hands up here There we go so that was my very first print. You can see I've printed a number of items here over to the left that are all sitting and some of the other items walked away. I did have a few misprints of course. Like this was a character I was printing for my son and I had some difficulties. You can see there's a, he's got like a pirate's leg or a peg leg over here and it's supposed to come together and then it just somehow went sideways. I think that I was having problems with adhesion to the bed. This was another attempt at that same print without support. And it just pretty much pushed the peg leg right off. It ended up breaking or snapping off. But the machine comes basically assembled in three different parts. And I know I can't quite fit everything in a frame. My, my space is very, very tight. I apologize for the lack of studio lighting and look. Uh, but this is real world. This is the space that I work in. So it, it comes with everything you need. It comes with starter filament. It comes with um, zip ties. It comes with the USB comes with a USB micro adapter. It even comes with these snips, which you can use to cut off the zip ties, which are, are wrapped around the arms. It has foam on there. It has a USB cord. It has instructions, which are very, very brief. Probably going to need some alternative uh, instructions there. And uh, the, the tools that you need to tighten up the nuts that you do need to tighten and the nuts that you need, it's all very basic. And it comes primarily assembled in three planes. You have your base, which everything is assembled. Even the uh, glass is already put down. Uh, you have your, your vertical arm, which again, the motors and the belts and everything are all assembled. And then you have your control unit. And of course, there's nothing there. You just have the cables out the back. And you have some two screws that run up through the bottom that are longer and they go right up through the arms And then you have these side plates. Let's take a look at those side plates I apologize for the shaky cam But this little plate here goes on this side and this is a stop switch right here So you put that on this side and it's got little um, Nuts on that have two flat sides on the back side So you just slide those through there and then as you turn these they lock into these little angle iron pieces and they lock in nice and tight and you don't need a hex tool, it comes in the bag. And then on this side is basically the same thing, but without any electronic components attached to it, it's just a little T-bracket. And then you have the longer ones that go through the bottom. And that's primarily your assembly. Um, outside of connecting the cables that come out of the back, hopefully you can see this. Let me find one that's easier to see. Hopefully you can see that right back there where my thumb is, it says Z. So they're, they're labeled in axis, so you'll find Z, X, and Y, and you just hook them up to the appropriate axis. I think the biggest tip that I can give you is about bed leveling, and I'm no expert at it, but I read a lot of uh, on the Facebook group, and I should mention that. This has a very, very active Facebook group. Just search for the CR10. Um, I'll link it down below in the Facebook group. Unfortunately, like many things in the internet, some people can get kind of snarky. So I'll read the 
initial posting, read the FAQ, and I think you have to take a short survey to join that group, kind of making you acknowledge that you'll read the FAQ or the initial posting. I can't remember which they call it. I joined too many things recently. But join that group so you can get plenty of good tips. Uh, but on the bed leveling, pretty much uh, the basic gist is you turn this on, you put it to home. And I, I would walk through this, but that would be, get to be a long tutorial. And this has already been done very well. Uh, SandTube has done a number of uh, beginner videos on this. So you set it to home, you bring this down, and there's these little tiny knobs. Hopefully you can see that with the poor lighting right here. These knobs rotate and they raise and lower the bed. And that's why I've printed these because these will go on those knobs the next time I have to level the bed to make access to those knobs a lot easier. And these are just a free a file off a of Thingiverse. Um, and this is a support bracket. Oops. Oh no, a top loss. But this is a support bracket that goes right back here to help support this moving piece. So you get your nozzle down and you get your paper on here and then you just slide your paper back and forth and all you're doing is you're looking for a bit of friction, light friction. And if you have any troubles with your print, one thing that I noticed is um, I printed straight to glass. It comes with the tape that you would need if you wanted to use the masking tape, these large sheets here. Every time I saw somebody use this, it seemed like they spent 15 minutes peeling this off the bottom of their print when they use it. But, you know, try it if you want to. I just went straight to glass. My glass is... It seems to be good and flat. There are many reports of this glass not being reliable, but mine has worked. So you do kind of a four corners with your, your leveling of the bed, and you go around all four, and then you do it once in the center. And when I find that that didn't necessarily work, probably because I was just starting out, I actually moved in a couple inches and did the four corners, and then did the center, and then my prints have worked ever since. Um, but, but again, I didn't go back to this print that was giving me fits. And you can see that I've got this nice little castle here, printed for my seven-year-old. She's been begging me ever since I printed this to, can I have the castle? And it did have a few stringies. You can kind of see one there on the top. You can clean those up with the included snips. And these are good snips. They snip stuff right off. Uh, this is, so oh, uh, uh, Junk Rat. Yes, that's who this is. This is the character that I was trying to print a full body of those bits. Uh, but this is the, the character, and he came out pretty good, if I can get the camera to focus. There we go. Kind of a detailed print there. And then, of course, you got to print a baby Groot, don't you? It would be much cooler if I was artistic and could paint, but uh, yeah, that came out pretty well. I've been really happy with this. Of course, I haven't printed a bunch of different stuff. I do have some Ninja Flex. So I can print some more quad related stuff and that was really one of the things that I wanted to get it for because as you can see with these items over here, I'm, get, I'm lining up giveaway items by the way, um, you know with Tomo frames and Flex RC Owl stuff, you know we can print these things to be useful whether it's printing um, a, a camera to mount to the top or we can print some other piece that we need for just utility purposes in our quads, that was one of the things I've wanted to get a printer for. I know Albert has mentioned printing off uh, camera mounts for, I think it was the SPC Maker products, so it would work better for him, more camera tilt, I think. So I want to get into that, and I want to get into the, the flexible prints, and I'll, I'll be doing that myself. But I wanted to give you guys kind of an initial impression from somebody who hasn't owned a printer and has researched and kind of backed off. Because one, I just cooled, I couldn't spend the 150 bucks when they were on sale, the, the A8 Net or the Anet 8 whichever it's called, because when it comes to this channel, that, that eats a, a pretty good portion of my quad budget for running the channel. So, you know, it's one video, it may have utility for a long, long time, but I just, I couldn't validate that. And finally, I just decided I'd ask GearBest, and to my surprise, they sent me one. So I will be linking down to GearBest. Uh, you can go to their site and visit and uh, take a look at this printer. But I was, I, was, I was surprised at how quickly I had this machine set up. And I thought it turned out quite well. And I was surprised at the lack of time I spent getting a successful print. I thought it would be a lot harder. I thought it would be harder just to pull something off a Thingiverse and, and put it on the SD card and make it print. But really, if you're using the latest version of Cura, C-U-R-A, it's a 3D printing software or slicing software. I'm not sure what you call it. You download your SDL files from Thingiverse. You open it in Cura. 
And when you install Kira, it asks you what printer you have. And the most recent version, or maybe even a version before, but the, the version that I downloaded and got, it asked which printer I had, and it had the CR10 in it. So you don't have to pick a different printer and then make a bunch of adjustments. It's done a pretty good job. Typically, the bed prints um, at 60 degrees, and the nozzle is at 200. Um, and then the filament is usually set at 0.2 millimeters, I believe. There's all sorts of settings in there, and I really haven't fussed with them. Uh, I did these prints, I, and all I did was enable uh, support, because I thought that might be the mix. But this probably had to do with the adhesion. Oh, and I forgot to cover the adhesion. So once you get the, the bed all flat and leveled, the next bit is, what are you going to use to adhere your print to it? And I use this. And my dad was gobsmacked when he looked at this. Come on, camera focus. Yeah, I got three kids and I got all sorts of this stuff laying around the house. So I should be uh, in good shape because we have to buy more every year when we go to school. And then they send it home every semester. But uh, this is the purple, so it dries clear. And so you can see a little bit of purple when you put it on there. Um, but I don't even clean the bed every time. I, I What I will do is I get some uh, rubbing alcohol. You can see I bought that at Walgreens. I'll spritz a little bit of that on there. Use a paper towel to wipe it off, and I usually do that when it's warming. I wait for the bed to get pretty much 260 degrees, and then I apply my hot glue. Not, not a lot, because I don't really clean the bed. I should, if you can see closely, hopefully, you might be able to see some film on there. And that's because I haven't taken a scraper to it too many times to really clean it off all that effectively. But when I have used the scraper on it, then I used some air dust to blow the stuff out of here and a microfiber cloth i picked up these from harbor freight i got a box of these for like twelve dollars three years ago and i still have half the box clean it and glue it that's the full process and i don't do that every time basically if i wanted to do a print tonight I would let the bed heat up a little bit. I put this in the printing area, which is typically in the center of the bed, depending upon the, the size of the print. Like if I were printing another one of these wheels, I would just do a little bit bigger size than this wheel with the glue. So just kind of going back and forth, making sure I got it covered. Maybe make a box around it or a circle, which of you. Let it print and it sticks really well. I think it has to do mainly with leveling the bed. I think if you get it too high, too close to the nozzle, then you get too much squish and then you end up with print problems or you get it too far away and it doesn't stick. Or maybe if your glass isn't really flat, they say sometimes this glass can be um, different dimensions throughout the glass and so you can flip it over. Some people have been going to mirrors. I've been hearing people yelling about, don't use mirrors and I don't know why. But uh, for me, this has worked very, very well. I think if you put it together, you go slow, just kind of like with making a quad or a drone doing your soldering, it'll work out just fine. And I would say, I can't tell you whether this is a good product or a bad product. I can only tell you that it's worked for me. And the fact that it came primarily assembled and I had it up, assembled and together and powered up in 30 minutes or less, that's a big bonus for me. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please leave those in the section down below. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.